here guys and today we're going to be talking about how to tune or really not tune but get the smoothest flight out of your quad as a beginner now this is part of the fpv beginner series where we learn all about how a drone works how to build a drone how to tune a drone and this is the video where i'm going to tell you to don't touch it that's right the secret on how to get smoother flight, the secret on how to get better flight, the secret on how to be more locked in, the secret on how to be able to do better tricks, the secret to why it's bobbling this way or that way is all the same answer, which is more stick time, more stick time, more stick time. You need to be flying more, touching your settings less, changing the variables of your quad less. Now this applies to all beginners who are flying anything that is Betaflight 3.57 or newer. Uh, there's Betaflight 4.0, 4.1, 4.2 that are all out, so multiple versions. If you have a quad that's older than the last two years or so, you fall within this. So it doesn't matter if you have your first tiny whoop like this Mobula 6. It doesn't matter if you have your first little micro like this Diatone Cube. And it doesn't matter if you have just finished building your first build like the $135 Team Black Sheep Source 1 build that's on the channel. Link to that right here. It doesn't matter which one of these you have. This applies to everyone. I see a lot of beginners in the groups posting all kinds of questions. How do I get my drone to fly smoother? What do I do? What version of Betaflight do I need to be on? What firmware do I need to be on? What settings do I need to be on? Give me your pigs. Give me your rates. Give me your filter settings. No, fuck all that. Okay, excuse my language, all right? It's like 20, day 25 of this lockdown. I actually took a shower today, so figured I'd make this video. The answer to all of those is more stick time, and here is why. If you're a beginner, if you are still even maybe as far as intermediate level, you don't have the stick time, you don't have the muscle memory, you don't have the capabilities flying to be able to differentiate any of those settings. Stick time is what's gonna make you a better pilot, not constantly changing your setup, not constantly changing your motors, not constantly changing your props. Every time somebody beats you at the race, every time Mr. Steel uploads a video, don't go change your setup. Stick time with the consistent setup is what's gonna make you better. If you watch cricket, if you watch a lot of other guys, you'll see they've been flying the same setup for years, 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 why? because stick time is what makes you better, not features. The same goes for changing equipment, and I'm totally guilty of this. During my first couple of years racing, I was constantly saying, oh my gosh, Miguel beat me at the race today. What motors is he flying? Yvonne beat me, Neil beat me. What, what props are those, man? What, uh, what motors are those? What ESC you got? What camera you got? swapping it all constantly now it's fun and make no mistake guys but fpv like almost any other hobby that involves any sort of tech can split into two hobbies very very easily one is actually doing the hobby which in our case is flying and two that you can creep up on you if you're not careful is just the hobby of collecting the gear because the gear is cool. We all want those latest motors. We all want that latest frame. We all want that latest camera. And it's okay to get all of that stuff. But as you accumulate the gear, make sure you also accumulate the stick time that goes with it to be able to take advantage of it. Now, I'm almost five years into flying. And I've tried all the different versions of Betaflight. I've tried all the different tunes, all the different settings. I've tried Butterflight, I've tried every prop, every motor, every camera, and what is going to help you fly smoother? It's more stick time. You don't have the vocabulary to even understand the concepts Should you read them. I see some advanced noobs going around reading up all the Betaflight dev material and making suggestions. Yes, they can speak the language, but do they actually know what that translates to in stick feel while you're flying? And that's why it's so hard. So keep your setup as consistent as possible and just fly more, 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 more. Well, John, we're all locked down, so it's not easy to get out and fly right now. That may be true, 
So fly your tiny hoops if you can. If you can get out for your one outing of exercise and fly a couple of packs, good for you. But if you can't, get on Velocidrone, get on Liftoff, get on DRL Simulator or any other simulator of your choice and put those stick times in. As a beginner, I tell all beginners that we are all due for about 500 crashes when we first start flying. Now, if you do it, you know, three or 400 of those virtually, you will call, you'll save yourself quite a bit of money, quite a bit of aggravation, quite a bit of downtime. And you can really learn things like how do you come out of being disoriented? How do you recover from a crash? How do you do this trick or that trick successfully and you'll have a little bit less problems in real life. So even if you can't get out right now, put that stick time in on the simulator. So how do you know when you are advanced enough to start making those manipulations? Well, here's what I would suggest. I'm not saying don't touch your settings at all. I'm saying get the stick time before you do it, before you make a change. Um, get a few hours on how it flies, you know, everyone's different. I like to fly when I change something 10, 20 packs, however much flight time that is for you. Now you make um, a note of what you think works best for you. Now here is the key. When you make a change, make a change. If you want to play with the new slidey filters on Beta Flight 4.1, that's totally cool. Do it, but change that one thing. Fly 10 packs, see how it feels, then decide whether you want to adjust again. Now, I would, all, I would try to get a baseline of several dozen hours of flight time before you go adjusting anything for me to really feel comfortable. And now here's a good benchmark. If you can go out and fly freestyle for five, six packs without crashing consistently, you're probably about an intermediate pilot. If you can do a couple of tricks, you don't crash, you're probably an intermediate pilot. If you can go to a race and actually complete some laps, complete the track, make it through the gates, I'm not saying win. I'm not saying get a million laps. If you can complete a few laps over the day, you're probably an intermediate pilot. You, it, it's funny the amount of time that you have to fly to even get to that point. When you're off by your own, you feel like a total expert. You can do a power loop, you can do all these tricks, but when you show up and fly with other people, you see how much more advanced they are, and it's like, whoa, I still have a lot to learn. Yes, you do still have a lot to learn. I still have a lot to learn. So I'm passing some of these things that I've learned. The same thing goes for changing out your gear. If you wanna try a new prop, if you wanna try a new motor, that's totally fine. I'm not saying don't do it, but change one thing at a time. I really suggest that if you can afford to have a couple of builds, have one as a baseline setup that you fly and have one as like your experimental. And on your experimental, change one thing at a time. Change your props. Don't change your motors, ESC, props, camera, all at once. Um, <laughs> and that's what a lot of us like to do. But then when you do it and something feels off or something feels good, you can't isolate which one of those variables it was that really gave you the good feeling. Was it the props that are $3? Was it the motors that cost you a hundred bucks? Was it the ESC that cost you 60 bucks? You don't know. So change those things incrementally and most importantly, get out and get your stick time. And when you are to that intermediate level, when you can feel the differences, that's when you go watch the barbell videos. That's when you go watch the other tuning series and learn about more about how you want to fly. But at the beginning, you don't know if you want a high pitch pop or a low pitch pop or a light prop or a heavy motor or a beefy motor. You don't know. You don't have the vocabulary to be able to distinguish why something feels better than or worse. And when you're making multiple changes all at once, you can't identify the individual pieces and you will never learn and you will hamper your growth. And that's what I did. And I want you not to do the same thing too. If I would have just did a lot of things that were recommended back in 2017 or 2016, if I don't want to win it straight to Acro sooner, straight to FPV sooner, stop messing with all my settings, stop messing with all my gear. I would have saved myself a lot of money, a lot of headaches, and I'd be a lot better of a pilot today. So I'm going to help you catapult, leapfrog, all of that BS, be better, get the stick time, quit worrying about the settings, quit, quit worrying about what Barwell says you should do. It's not going to help you. Thanks guys.